What's up, future respiratory therapist? In this video, we're gonna talk about compliance, but in regards to elastance, a term we don't talk about very often. Let's dive in. Alrighty, so as I mentioned in this video, we're talking all about compliance versus elastance and why you should understand them. Before we do that, hit, do me a favor, head over to respiratorycoach.com. Check out the TMC and the CSC boot camp sitting there waiting for you to aid and assist you in passing your credentialing exams on the first attempt. If you check that out, I'd greatly appreciate it. Now, compliance versus elastance, they are not the same thing. Let's first start with compliance. And what we see here is we have healthy lungs. Now, normal healthy lungs, um, they take in volume very easily. Okay, so they are compliant lungs, normal compliance. Uh, and what compliance means is, is under a certain amount of pressure, what is the willingness of the lungs to receive that volume? Okay, so that's what we're talking about when we talk about compliance. Some might would say, how easily will the lungs stretch in enduring inhalation? You see, compliance, the key here is all about the inspiratory side of things. How easy is it to deliver gas to the patient under pressure? So that is what we're talking about with compliance, air going in. So now when we talk about elastance, we're talking about the expiratory side of thing. We're talking about air coming out because here's what we learned very early on in our respiratory journey is that inspiration is active. We, we, the diaphragm contracts and we draw air, air moves into our lungs, but exhalation is passive. Why? Because the diaphragm comes back up and the lungs recoil to resting state. And that's the word you wanna remember for elastance is recoil. So the stretch on inspiration has to do with how compliant the lungs are. The recoil back to resting state during exhalation, that's elastance. Now, the key thing here is to understand how these two components work together uh, and how they are related. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Now, for this patient, we're going to talk about a patient with ARDS. Now, obviously, as a respiratory therapist, uh, a lot of times we're not taking care of patients who have healthy lungs. We're taking care of patients who are sick, have some type of pulmonary impairment or disorder. So what we find is, is that their lung compliance is usually not normal. So what we know from that is, is that when somebody has ARDS, then what we get are stiff lungs. Now I think about it, if the lungs become stiff, is it going to be easier or harder to get air or a volume of gas into the patient's lungs? Are they gonna be compliant and say, give me the, give me the air, give me the air? Or do you think they're going to be more non-compliant to resist that air coming in and be harder to get them to inflate. Now, if you said they would be more likely to be non-compliant, then you are correct. ARDS will cause a decrease in compliance. Now, this is an important point here because while we have a decrease in compliance, what we find is that we have an increase in elastance with our ARDS patients. And and that makes sense when you think about it. The lungs don't want to stretch. When you apply positive pressure to them, they don't want to open. They're very non-compliant. So at the end of that inspiration, when exhalation, remember, is passive, the lungs go, and they exhale very, very quickly. You see, that's the key point. Decreased compliance will yield an increased elastance or elasticity. That's the, that's the big point here is realizing that they have an inverse relationship. Let me show you one more thing here. Let's talk about emphysema. Now you see emphysema, contrary to popular belief, people think, oh, if you smoke too much, you'll get emphysema and your lungs will become um, uh, uh, black and stiff. And, and that's not true. They, they don't get stiff. They actually become overly compliant. They become big and floppy. So their compliance actually increases. But you see, this is where that increased compliance is a problem because you may think to yourself, well, that sounds like a good thing. Why would we have a problem with compliance being up? Well, 
if the compliance is overly compliant to a detrimental state, then what we find is elastance goes down. Interesting, right? Now, remember why elastance is important? Recoil. That is how, the, that, that's, that's a mechanism of exhalation. Air goes in, nice compliant lungs, exhalation, the lungs recoil back to resting state. In emphysema, because of these big, floppy, overly compliant lungs that have lost their elasticity, they don't recoil. So what happens to that gas? It gets trapped. It doesn't get fully exhaled. That's a problem. That's also why you focus on, when we're working with patients with emphysema, COPD. We typically will take time to teach those patients how to purse lip breathe. Why do we teach them that? To extend exhalation and promote a more full, complete expiratory phase. Well, why do we have to do that? Because if we don't, due to the loss of elasticity, they'll chronically air trap. During mechanical ventilation, you'll find that for your emphysematic patients, you typically want a longer E time. Why? To allow more time for that air to escape. Why do they need more time for the air to escape? Loss of elasticity, along with other things, airway resistance, increased secretions, a bronchospasm, those type of things too. But from an alveolar lamp standpoint, talking about compliance, very compliant lungs, very easy to ventilate, not very good on the expiratory side of things. Let's go back one time. Let's go back to ARDS. Remember, ARDS, poor compliance, very decreased compliance, which means they have a very high elasticity. Now watch this make sense. Remember when we talked about emphysema, we talked about a long E time. Now you see, you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't ventilate an ARDS patient the exact same way you could ventilate or should ventilate an emphysema patient. And it all comes back to these concepts right here. Because see, ARDS with that high elasticity, that air doesn't want to go in and then it comes out very, very quick, which is why we use higher rates on these patients. Why we can use higher rates on these patients. Why? Because we're not worried about air trapping like we are with emphysema. So you see how these concepts, compliance, elastance, and then tying them in to your disease processes is going to help and make you a better respiratory therapist because you're going to understand when can I use a higher respiratory rate? When is the inspiratory phase the problem, such as a decreased compliance, versus when is the expiratory phase going to be the area of focus because that's where the problems lie? That's compliance and elastance. All right, let's give you a quick summary here. Compliance how easy it is or how easily the lungs are to inflate. Elastance, how quickly they recoil during expiration. So let's keep it in mind like that. Compliance, inspiration, elasticity or elastance, expiration. Hopefully that helps. I appreciate you watching. I'm Respiratory Coach. Do me a favor. Stay here with me right here on YouTube. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, the like, and leave me a comment. Tell me how often do you talk about elasticity at the bedside with um, your fellow respiratory therapists. Instagram, TikTok, at Respiratory Coach. LinkedIn, at Joe Lewis, RespiratoryCoach.com. Don't forget about the TMC and the CSC boot camps. And above all else, remember, average is easy. Don't be it.